Saronsberg Estate in the Tilbach Valley is the first overnight stop of the 2024 Absa Cape Epic. Having completed the prologue in Lawrenceford, the teams were bussed north through the winelands to Tilbach. There, big mountains and testing trails awaited, along with exceptional natural beauty. The wine estate, which produced its first vintage in the same year as the inaugural Absa Cape Epic, is internationally renowned and boasts an exceptional exhibition of sculptures and paintings. The town of Tilbach itself is located at the junction of two small rivers and has an agricultural history dating back to the first Dutch and French Huguenot settlers in the late 1690s. For South Africans born in the 1960s or before, the earthquake of September 1969 will be the major memory. 28 houses on the historic Church Street were badly damaged, including the Opasturi, which was built in 1769, but the majority were restored after a national fundraising effort to repair the notable old buildings. 55 years on, near tectonic forces are expected once more, though this time they'll be pushed through the pedals of the UCI men and women, rather than up through the crust of the earth. The 2024 Absa Cape Epic began with a titanic battle on the prologue in Lawrenceford Wine Estate. Of the earlier starters in the UCI men's field, the Mbuka A team of Marco Hubert and Vessel Buerta were the pace setters. They posted the fastest time and were only knocked off the hot seats by Buff Megamo's Hans Becking and Wart Allemann. Obeer Leert Speed Company's Lucas Baum struggled in the heat. He and Georg Egger were only able to post the sixth fastest time of the day. The second last team of the start ramp was the World Bicycle Relief pairing of Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney. They blitzed the course and toppled Buff Megamo off the top of the timesheets, setting a time of 1 hour 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Defending champion Matt Beers was the last starter alongside his Toyota Specialized 91 teammate Howard Grotz. They enjoyed a strong ride but were not able to match Schurter and Finney, ceding 51 seconds to the stage winners. Yeah, it's for sure good if you can start with a, with a good, good, good momentum and good feeling. You know, you have have good legs, but yeah, it's just it's one hour of uh, probably about 30 hours. So it's just the first test, uh, but it was sure a good, good leg opener as well. And uh, I like to start with a, with a prologue. You can ride into it and uh, dig them really deep. But yeah, the next day is, is looking completely different. And uh, yeah, we hope we also are uh, riding well over, over longer distance. Having earned the first yellow Chiavita jerseys of the race, World Bicycle Relief topped the leaderboard heading into Stage 1. Behind Toyota Specialized 91, Buff Megomo were at 132 of the lead, with Mbuko a further 5 seconds back. In the Aramex women's race, the Toyota Specialized 91 combination were the ninth team off the start ramp. Their relatively early start belied their status among the major favourites, but their form did not. They set the early times to beat and led in the clubhouse until Ghost Factory Racing powered through the course. The Dutch-Swiss pairing of Anne Terpstra and Nicole Kohler blitzed through the time splits, proving themselves to be the fastest on the 26km course. Their final time of 1 hour 14 minutes and 45 seconds was 1 minute and 11 seconds quicker than Sofia Gomez Viafan and Samara Shepard. Cannondale Factory Racing could also not match Terpstra and Kohler's effort. Candice Lill and Mona Mitavala started after the pace setters but lost just over a minute to the stage winners as the Austrians struggled in the heat. The final UCI women's team to start and finish their time trial effort was Vera Losser and Alexis Skada of Efficient Infinity Insure SCB SRAM. The defending champion and her new teammate rode a steady prologue and posted the fourth best time of the day. We are preparing for a cross-country season and we both always kind of dreamed of racing an epic and right now we just started with that dream and um, for me it didn't really came in my mind that we would be wearing this jersey today, especially with the plan we had. So I think you have to ask me this again tomorrow, for now I'll just try to enjoy it. <laughs> After the opening day, Terpster and Kohler lead Lil and Mittavala by 1 minute and 5 seconds in the battle for Orange. The surprise performance of the prologue was that of Hayley Breen and Lena Giraud, who finished the stage in fifth. This set the scene for a fiercely contested opening marathon stage. This set the scene for a fiercely contested opening marathon stage. Stage one was 88 kilometers with 2,450 meters of climbing, coming in four major ascents. The most significant of which coming late in the stage was Fanti's Pass, a 9% average gradient behemoth. 
The elite men were undaunted by the climbs. In fact, they were relishing the difficulty of the day to come. The tactics? Yeah. Uh, have fun and enjoy. No, I think everything will come down to Fanti's Pass. I remember the states more or less from 2021. And yeah, let's see what's happening. I'm happy we're here with Wout, feeling good. Also our second team uh, yesterday in the top 10. So I think we will show them today also in the front. And yeah, it will be a good day, I guess. I hope. <laughs> so yeah, today is the first restage. Uh, yesterday we were not that lucky. So uh, we try hard again today. And uh, yeah, hopefully it turns out better for us. And the heat will definitely be a factor today. It looks like it's getting super warm here. Uh, uh, especially in this area, I think we're far away from the sea, so it will heat up a bit more here. Yes, this is where it all starts, the proper racing, and um, today is yeah, it's a hard day. Fanti's Pass we did in um, 2021, so we know a good amount of the route, and um, it's going to be a tough one today. A lot of positioning, so yeah, I think there'll be a, I think there'll be some gaps. Positioning would be key, so staying at or near the front would be vital. Rolling off the start line, the fight for position was on from the off. Racing at close quarters has its consequences, however, and narrowing in the track within the first few hundred metres squeezed the pack together and riders were down. Among those caught up were the KMC, Paga Eurosteel 2 and Superior Lions teams. Fortunately, there were no serious mechanicals or injuries and everyone was soon back up and riding. In the RMX women's competition, the nerves were as palpable as they had been in the men's field. I would say just um, excitement, getting the butterflies out and getting everything kind of smoothed out as far as our communication and partnership. But I think we work really well together and it seems like, um, I, I don't know, I think it's going to be a good partnership just based off of yesterday. I think we're in Toolbox, if I say it correctly. Uh, it is day one, so state Stage one, day two of the Cape Epic. Uh, the boys have probably a four hour day. The girls closer to four and a half, closer to five maybe. Uh, we got some good climbing. We have a little evil climb at the, in the last like 15K. So I think there's probably gonna be a shake up in the GC and then some pretty big time gaps as well. Stage one is always like a big day in the Cape Epic. Obviously everybody wants their, to stamp their, their mark on the race and I think it's probably one of the days where people, you know, it depends how you've come in with your training, your taper, etc, etc, so a lot can happen on stage one, um, and I think it would be the same today. Stage one would be a proving ground for the entire 2024 Absa Cape Epic Field, but particularly for the UCI women. The climbs would determine who the real contenders for the overall victory would be. First though, there would be a moment or two to ease into the stage on the undulating early kilometres. Only once the trail's headed uphill would the top women begin to exert pressure on the peloton. The early crash hadn't held up any of the main protagonists or the Bulls Mavericks. Urs Huber had been a late addition to the team and was clearly finding his legs on the first marathon day. Even the big Swiss rider, though, could not match the fury with which Obeerliet Speed Company attacked the group. Baumanegger stretched the field to breaking point, but could not force a further split. Their pressure did cause Grotz and his Toyota Specialized Support Team rider Johan van Sale to get themselves tangled up. With no damage done, they were both soon being shepherded back to the group by Alex Miller and Beers. Throughout the Raptors' rise climb that followed, the Armanega drove on, setting what was for many a relentless tempo up the switchback climb through the Feinbos. Some were on the rivet, but Schurter still had time to have a bar, almost disregarding the technicality of the trail. His rivals waited for the dual tracks among the orchards before they risked feeding. But even when they did, the speed hardly dropped. It remained frenetic throughout. Once again, this was putting Grotz under pressure. Not physically, as he had no difficulty following wheels, but mentally perhaps, as he crashed for the second time in 20 kilometers. Piers came back to help pace his American teammate back to the group once more, but on the second occasion, the pursuit was longer and required the South African to dig deep to bridge back across. He was unable to do so before the next water point and the thirsty floating bridge. 
Chertra and Finney led a group of Obea led speed company, Bulls Mavericks, Buff Megamo, William Vittoria and Paige Eurostil through the halfway mark. Biers, Grotz and Ibuka A were nearly a minute back. In the Aramex women's competition, the undulating opening kilometers provide little opportunity for the favorites to thin the field. Therefore, they rode at a steady tempo, which allowed the peloton to remain bunched rather than strung out and under pressure. This provided an opportunity to see the contenders for a top 10 placing who are not in the running for victory on the opening day. The foremost of those teams was the E-Ford private clients holding team. Leona Gerald and Hayley Breen had been fifth on the opening day. They, along with the Fortress women's Laura Stark and Isla Stowe, as well as Scott Calabandida's Bulls Natalia Fischer and Irina Lutzelschwab, were mixing it up with the favourites of the first 40 kilometres of the day. Along with them, Ghost Factory Racing, Cannondale Factory Racing, Toyota Specialized 91 and Efficient Infinity Insure SCB SRAM were Marga Moschetti and Constanza Fasolis of the Efort Mento Corpo team. The group would periodically thin down when a climb or trail strung the field out. Yet it would swell in number once more as soon as the surface leveled or smoothed. The concern was rather who was absent from the group rather than who was present, especially as the day was backloaded with climbing. The absence of the ABSA African jersey wearing Daniel Stradom and Stephanie Walters of Efficient Infinity Insure was a source of alarm for their fans. Monica Calderon and Mary Figueras of Canada ISB were also missing for the group and would later limp home in 16th position on the day. Walters' early issues were not as dramatic and she recovered later but was unable to help Stratum fight their way back to the sharp end before the climbing commenced. For the overnight leaders, the steady pace was an opportunity to tick off kilometres in a drama-free fashion. That opinion was clearly shared by Lil and Mitte who was clearly feeling better than she had the day before, as they also waived the opportunity to push the tempo. Even Losser, Skada, Gomez Vivifan and Shepard, who had more to gain, were unwilling to take up the pacemaking duties. Yet, the trails would ramp up steeply in the second half of the day. That fact alone, along with the strength of Ghost Factory Racing, would enforce the splits later. Or Beer Liet Speed Company's early efforts were starting to tell on themselves rather than on their rivals. Toyota Specialized 91 and Ibuka A had bridged back across to the lead group. Baumelega still set the pace on the climb through the Klipperafi trails. They were followed by Paige Eurostil, World Bicycle Relief, Buff Magamo, Willie Victoria, and the Bulls Mavericks. Miller and Van Sale of Toyota Specialized were in no man's land chasing the lead group, but ahead of the next pack. The chasing group contained a number of Apps African jersey contenders, including Honeycomb Pro Cycling. They would, however, not catch the leaders before the Obia Liet Speed Company group summited the climb and began the fast paced drop through the Toyota Tough segment. Following the flowing trail downhill, the leaders were soon extending their advantage over Miller and Company on the trails. Behind Baum, Eger, Schurt and Finney, the contenders for the day, were Simon Schneller, Beers, Grotz, Joubert, Uber, Simon Stiebjan, Jakob Hartmann, Boerte, as well as Philip Bass, Peter de Troy, Fabian Rammensteiner and Samueli Boro, Becking and Allemann. At the foot of the descent, the route turned straight back uphill and the World Bicycle Relief and Buff Megamo teams surged to the front. Allemann then upped the ante and started to distance riders from the group. Soon only Schurter, Finney, Beers and his teammate Becking were comfortable following. Sadly for Beers, Grotz was unable to match the pace. The Toyota Specialized 91 team thus slipped back as did Obeer Liet Speed Company and Willia Vittoria. All three were fighting to limit their losses, which they did on the descent that followed, regaining parity just in time for the infamous Funtis Pass ascent. As the gradients pitched upwards to an excess of 10% in places, Baum and Egger were conclusively distanced. Our beers had to pace Grotz up the climb in an attempt to take the battle into the closing kilometers. 
Once again, Beers was able to haul Grotz and himself back to Fabian Rabensteiner and Samuel Iporo, while the leaders were just visible up the road. Baumanega, meanwhile, conceded more time on Fanti's pass. Up front, Becking was setting the tempo near the summit of the pass, but his efforts were not enough to maintain the advantage Alemann had established on the lower slopes of the climb. Beers' power and Grotz's fighting resolve were aiding them to close the gap once more. Rabensteiner and Poro were also closing in on the leaders once more. But as they were about to make contact, Schurter pulled the top three into the final descent. The Swiss star almost instantaneously opening a few seconds advantage. This put pressure on the teams behind and caused the fatigued Beers to suffer a minor crash which left Buff Megamo as World Bicycle Relief's only rivals for stage victory and set the stage up for a thrilling sprint finish. Rounding the final bend, Schurter, Becking, Alemann and Finney charged for the line. But as he powered up, the Danish champion snapped his chain, allowing Buff Megamo to claim stage honours. Piers and Grotz, still riding to minimise losses, crossed the line in third. William Vittorias, Rabenstein and Poro were fourth on the day. A visibly disappointed Baum and Egger rounded out the top five. We didn't have time to make a plan uh, because it was super fast in the final and uh, yeah, I wanted to to be in the first position when we come here in the final straight, but Nino passed me in, uh, in the end, and uh, I just tried to be as fast uh, as possible at the finish line, and then Hans was behind me, so it was up to Hans. But when I looked behind and I saw that Hans was in front of Fini, I I was just super happy. It's uh, it's my third stage win, but still uh, feels like the first one. It's it's really special, and uh, yeah, I'm super happy. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, when you have the yellow jersey, you don't have to uh, be at the front to show your, uh, how strong you are. So, yeah, it's quite normal. We just sit in there and, and we watch a little bit the other riders and the other teams. So, uh, I think we benefit a little bit from that in the beginning and, and we knew uh, it's going to be hard. The climbs was coming in the end, so we didn't want to waste too much energy uh, in the beginning. Yeah, the start uh, was really fast. I, I was told that it was going to be and it, it lived up to, to those expectations. Uh, made a couple mistakes but fought back every time and then felt really strong at the end. Yeah, I think today we uh, paid for a little statement we want to want to show in the beginning of the stage uh, with a lot of anger in the stomach from yesterday's disappointing prologue. Um, yeah, I think in the end we paid for uh, not the most tactical, intelligent race in the beginning. But nevertheless, I think the, we showed that we have the legs today. Unfortunately, we couldn't make them suffer in the beginning uh, as we wanted to. But yeah, I think with a more clever tactical racing uh, the next days, then um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a better result in the end. In a reshuffle of the prologue podium, Becking and Alleman stepped up onto the top step after stage one, flanked by Schurter and Finney, as well as Beers and Grotz. World Bicycle Relief ceded two seconds to buff Megamo, but more importantly, Becking and Alleman gained 21 seconds on Beers and Grotz. Armenegger conceded four minutes to the race leaders. After two days of racing, World Bicycle Relief lead Toyota Specialized 91 by one minute and 10 seconds. Buff Megamo are just 20 seconds off second place. A strong ride by Honeycomb Pro Cycling's Mark Pritson and Tristan Lokir saw them leapfrog to sixth overall and into the ABSA African Jersey lead. The ascent of the Klipperfee Trail separated the RMX women's competition main contenders from the rest of the top 10. As had been the case in the prologue, the top four were Ghost Factory Racing in Orange, Cannondale Factory Racing, Toyota Specialized 91 and Efficient Infinity Insure SCB SRAM. The Lawson was starting to struggle at the back of the front group as they summited the climb and dropped into the Toyota Tough segment. Kohler used the single track descent to spread the four teams until Lawson and Skada were conclusively dropped. The pressure the Swiss rider was putting on her rivals meant that only Terpstra and Gomez Viefan followed comfortably. 
Lille, Mittewalna and Shepherd were not far behind, exercising more caution than the Ghost Racer. Back on the valley floor, Gomez Villafan assumed pacemaking duties in an attempt to control the tempo for a partner Shepard who was clearly beginning to struggle. Lil recognised that fact and upped the speed on the next climb, forcing the New Zealander onto the back foot. The Argentine dropped back to help but was unable to stop the time losses. Soon the Cannondale and Ghost Factory racing teams were ascending away, engaging in a two-way tussle which endured throughout Fanti's pass. Those seconds separated them at times, neither could gain a definitive advantage. After the major climb of the day, the undulating single tracks and then fast-paced descent did nothing to split the teams either. As they entered the final five kilometers, it was clear the day would come down to a sprint finish, barring disaster that is. A quick powwow between Terpster and Kola meant they had a plan, and it nearly came to naught when Kola narrowly avoided hitting a Stienbock. Then Lil overshot a corner and Ghost Factory Racing were re-handed the impetus. In the final kilometre, the squads were split and neither held any advantage. That suited Kohler and Terpstra and they powered to the line as Mittervalna faded and claimed their second successive stage victory. Though they were initially too exhausted to celebrate the achievement. We are super happy that we, we still uh, are in the orange jersey. Um, it was never like our main goal. We just wanted to enjoy the eight days of Cape Epic and to be in the orange jersey is just top. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, to be honest, I didn't feel so good this morning. And so this day was like a bit unsure how to approach it. So I just took it very easy in the beginning. Um, like all the little sprints for trail entries, I, I I did. So I, I couldn't, and I also didn't want to go with. So I just yeah kept it slow for myself or steady pace, and yeah I managed to recover until the, for the end because I knew that the last two climbs are very steep and there's no place to hide. So that was like where I said, okay, if I'm not there for those two climbs, then it's over. So yeah, managed to get my energy just like yeah just for those last two climbs and um, felt very good I also yeah like we sprint for the win I think that's the biggest success of today looking at how I felt this morning um, I think Candice and Mia are like a great yes it's a great great duo and I think Candice also was stro so strong today again and, um, I'm a bit sorry that uh, like just my body shut down yesterday and I don't know why but um, I hope and I think I will make the corner just the, cl the climb after the Toyota tough um, section uh, we kind of did a bit of attack um, and then I think that caught up on me and then we um, yeah we set a good pace and did what we could uh, Sophia was riding super strong so I was really Really lucky to have her support out there and um, all that experience to, to keep it calm and to bring it home. For the second day in a row, the Aramex Women's Competition podium places were filled by Ghost Factory Racing, Canada Factory Racing and Toyota Specialized 91. Terpster and Kohler's margin of victory was a single second, but Gomez Villafan and Shepard conceded five minutes and one second to the day's victors. The result means that Ghost Factory Racing lead Canada Factory Racing by 1 minute and 6 seconds. Toyota Specialized 91 slipped to 6 minutes and 12 back, ahead of Efficient Infinity Insure and e Private Client Holdings. Terpster and Kohler's perfect start to the race ensures that they will race Stage 2 in the RMX Women's Leaders jerseys. The second marathon stage is a 97-kilometer loop of the Witzenberg Valley. The day starts with a climb of the old wagon trail out of Tilbach and into the rugged and fertile vale beyond. In the Witzenberg, the single tracks are technical, but not as testing as the wagon trail descent back towards Saronsburg. <laughs> 